If you'd like to know what I learned doing a point-to-point -point link for the first time, stay tuned. So our university has a field station in the Capitol Reef National Park. We have network access to the station from two point-to-point -point microwave links. The radios were getting pretty old and the links were becoming pretty unreliable. So I was asked to come up with a plan to upgrade the links. So I decided to use Ubiquiti Air Fiber radios because I was familiar with their products. I currently use several of their small nano bridges on campus and I manage them with UNMS, which is the Ubiquiti's cloud-based management software, stands for Ubiquiti Network Management Software. And the new devices would be compatible with the UNMS software. So the links to the radios and all the software I'm using are going to be in the description down below. So using the GPS coordinates for the towers and Google Maps, I got the distance between the links. And I had visited the sites before, so I knew the layouts of the buildings and the towers. And I also knew that we had a direct line of sight to all the towers with no obstructions, so I didn't have to worry about the Fresnel zone, which is a football-shaped area between the two radios. You have to keep at least 60% of that clear of obstructions, or it could cause some interference. So I picked 23 dBi gain directional antennas that were designed for the radios I was using. And with 29 dBm of output power on the radio, that, that gave me an EIRP of about 52, of 52 dB, just under the FCC max at 5.8 gigahertz. And the free space path loss on a 20 kilometer link is approximately neg 33 dB using this equation here. And that gave me an RSSI of 58 dBm, which I thought was good enough for a stable link. And the other link was 5.5 kilometers, and I used the lowest channel I could on that one because I was using the highest channel on the first one. So I could get the maximum separation between the two links to avoid any adjacent channel interference. I also had to reduce the output power on the shorter link to stay within the FCC limits on that channel. I could use the supplied 110 volt PoE injectors that came with the radios at two of the sites, but for the middle tower, which was solar powered, I had to use a ubiquity switch that was built to run on 48 volt DC. And it would supply the radios with their proprietary 20 volt, 24 volt on two pair power. 
and it'd also be managed by UNMS software. So I assembled, configured, and tested all of the devices before we left to ensure that there was end-to-end -end connectivity and the security was in place. Now Ubiquity has a program called AirLink, which really helps with the install of the long-range point-to-point links. And I'll show you that now. Let's look. So I entered the GPS coordinates of the radios, and then I entered the heights of the that they would be on the towers and the output power and the channel width I wanted to use. So that gives me a compass heading and the tilt on the antenna to be able to point them at each other and get a course alignment. And also you can see with the elevation view here in the center that there's nothing in the way of the Fresnel zone, like I said. In the Utah desert, you don't really have to worry too much about tall trees. There's just scrub oak. As long as the mountain isn't in your way, you should be good to go. So we went down with three teams of two people, thinking that that would be the most efficient, beneficial use of our time. Each team would travel to one of the sites and stay there until both links were up and operating. Before we left, we discussed and planned what each team's responsibilities would be, as well as how to best accomplish what we needed to do. So safety was big concern as none of us were really professional tower installers, but we all wanted to try it. So we bought safety harnesses for everyone. And I made sure that the harnesses fit every person. And we tried to do as much training as we could, how to use them. And we talked about what our expectations would be while we were on the towers. So we had handheld radios for the communications and went low tech with some mirrors to flash at each other so we could pinpoint our locations. It was surprising how helpful the mirrors were to see exactly where someone was so we could point the radios at each other. And we mounted the radios using the compass headings and the angle markings on the mounting brackets and incorporating the mirror trick to get the course alignment. The radios we were replacing had devices inside the building with coax cable running up to the tower to a directional antenna, but the new devices had the radios connected directly to the antennas. I like that better because you have less signal loss in the link budget. So we ran exterior Cat5 cabling up to the towers and made sure all the connections and penetrations were sealed against the weather. I used the same IP addressing scheme that we were using on the old radios, so I didn't have to change anything on the existing infrastructure. And the pairs of radios use a wireless distribution system access point station configuration. So after the course alignment, we powered up the access point side followed by the station side. And luckily enough, both links came up right away, so we were most of the way there. So using the signal strength LEDs on the radios and the web GUI for them, we made small adjustments on one side at a time until we had the best signal we could get. While we were still on the mountains, we did as much testing as we could to validate the links. The web GUIs for the radios indicated that the link potential was over 95% and the signal was excellent. And there's also a built-in speed test for the link. And both the links had at least double our backhaul speed, so we had so that was good. And we had the team down at the field station conduct a speed test, an UCLA speed test, as well as an iPerf test to a server on our main campus. And both test results were adequate for our needs, so that was good. And we also called the main campus and made sure they could still connect to all the servers they need to and all the sensors at the field station. So all in all, everything's worked pretty good so far. Um, this is a view of the UNMS software showing all of the devices and how long they've been up. You can see that we have 171 days so far on the links down at the field station. So I'd say that's pretty stable. And this is a GUI from one of the radios. Shows we still have an excellent signal and plenty of capacity. Lots to grow on since our 
back call speed is only 100 megabits. All in all, it was a pretty big learning experience for me. I've never done that long of a link before. I had a lot of fun and I'm glad it worked out for us. Um, if this helped you at all, leave me comments, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Thanks again. See you later.